publisher. Oh, oh, so. you actually have yeah. the right to. Yeah. Them. So. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's just technicalities with the legal stuff. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> for the film festivals, they want like two thousand dollars a year to be able to. Oh, use, oh, for the actual right. Yeah. Use that music. So I might yeah. have. I might do another song at That's the end. That's crazy. I'm in the wrong business. I just start so making you did, songs. You didn't compose it. Oh, I'm no, sorry. no. So it's you a, actually. It's, yeah, you, yeah. When you watch the movie, you'll see it's an oldie tune. You know, uh-huh, from uh-huh. from years ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've, they have something like that with um. What's the site that I use? Uh, Gemendo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. G- G- Gemendo, yeah, G- yeah. Gemendo. I don't even know how you pronounce. Yeah. Usually, it. with those kind of sites, you can buy the rights, and you don't have to worry anymore. You just it's a clean buy. A clean yeah. Thing. I just. I just found a song that was appropriate because the song uh, it's it's called Rendezvous with You and it, you know they oh. kind of rendezvous rendezvous with you know, I don't want to tell you too much about the movie okay. but they rendezvous you know yes yeah. roll around in the hay yeah hey you know? kind of like Jane hey, hey, hey. Jane Russell you could have also got the song <laughs> roll 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 in the hay no, that's, that's a, a a young Frankenstein reference sorry uh, the experience you had in your premiere of your film. In getting the, what are those people that write the newspaper? Getting the, the, uh, just press? The, the press, press, the press out, and the fact that they no ignored you, no, yeah. yeah, ignored you, and, and, and then there's, there's like no outlet or no, like, you know, not that we're going to be a big right. thing, but right. it's just something as a, as a archive of like, look, this is, and then as it gets a little more known, it's like, yeah, these are, right, um, right. You know, Cause it's kind of frustrating because, you see, like, you know, online on, you know, new local, you know, periodicals and things yeah. like that, and in print, there's never anything about, like, filmmakers, local filmmakers. It's, you know, local theater, uh, local artists, local yeah. this and that, but there's never any kind of coverage or... When you do a Google search for, like, independent filmmaking in Ventura or in Oxnard or Ventura County, for that matter, it's a very hodgepodge, non-directional like what comes up, right? right? So when you look at it through like Google, which is what everyone looks right. to search or something, um, it almost seems like it's non-existent here. And you're like, well, wait a second. Yeah. I know a lot of people that make stuff. Either no one's writing about them, right? You know, because, yeah, I don't expect everyone to have a website, but right. someone in the VC Star should have wrote about one of them, and that should have showed up because all that shows up is either the Ventura Festival, yeah, the Ojai Festival, or the Oxnard Festival, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara one, huge. But it's like, yeah, okay, the festivals, but yeah, where are the festival, people that yeah, make stuff no, for the festival? Nothing specific about the actual yeah. filmmaker themselves or production company, right, right, know? right. So when I was uh, sending out my little notes to the press, the local press, you know, I gave a little blurb. I even sent the invitation thing. Um, the only one that r- responded, and she says, oh, it's a private event. We don't do those or something like that. But the attitude was very, like, condescending. Oh. Kind of pissed me off. And But I sent, I replied to her, but with, you know, kind, kind, you know. Yeah. I said, I said, uh, there's no, just like what we're talking about, there is, you know, no highlighting of local filmmakers. Right. Um, I thought to send you this so you can send someone out to actually you know cover this so there could be some mention about local you know filmmakers in this in this community yes you know something to that is you know aspect i'm just paraphrasing what i wrote but right right and never responded back so then is it like are they expecting filmmakers to like show their movies in the middle of a park so it's a public event and i even (laughs) said i said look i I even said i kind of hit her back with something to the effect of saying since since the the dawn of motion pictures, the press has always been invited to movie screenings, yeah. and the movie screens are private. Right. You know. Yeah. Even if they're at like a theater. Right. They're still private. Right. 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 And the press is always welcome. They're, in fact, they're invited. You know, they have yeah. press kits and everything. But she didn't respond. You know, so. Isn't the point to promote locally? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that is called VC yeah. reporter. It doesn't right. make sense. The last time I could think of someone being presented as a filmmaker was about, I think it was about 15 years ago, a friend of mine made a feature film locally, and he was on the cover of VC reporter. And... Um, that is like the last time I could think that they highlighted. And, I, and honestly, I don't know how we got that gig. I, I don't know. He got on the cover of the VC Reporter. Huge story about it. But that's it. We didn't get any kind of press coverage. But, you know, what's funny is like if something happens and 
somebody becomes famous as oh, boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yo, sorry, we didn't contact you back then. We were, <laughs> yeah. you know, this and this and that. Yeah, you know, it's like. So are? when they contact me, when I get famous, I'll be like, screw you. <laughs> I'm going to LA, reporter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Yeah, it, it's almost like here, showing your own movies, showing your own work, trying to, to represent yourself, um, or do a lot of any creative artistic endeavors in the area here that, and not just Oxnard or Ventura, but really like Ventura County, right? right? Cause even Santa Barbara is kind of like that too, where it's who, you know, right? Cause right. your friend might've got on the cover of the VC reporter because not that he pulled strings. It's someone on the VC reporter, right? Reporter, VC reporter. Yes. Um, knew him or knew of him or knew like, it was like an in right, that gets right, you, got right, you connected right. in. There are some things I know I sound bitter because I never get awarded like the the grants or the art mm. grant that they used to have. And because um, Oxford had this this art grant and after a while of everyone we knew trying to apply, not everyone would make it. And the ones that did, you kind of saw a pattern. You were like, well, because he works for the city and then that person worked for yeah, Oh, I see why they're uh, linked oh, up in some way. You know, yeah. Linked up either with money or with just notoriety. It's more about who you know rather than what are you doing, right? Rather than it's it's a report on the culture of the area. It's really right. just a report of here's someone I might know. Look at this, you know, and it, it's kind of, uh, it's like a, like a downer on on trying to be creative in this area. Right. So yeah, do you, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, so do you think that in that case, it's our responsibility now that we have social media and we have these things to, yeah. we got to run it ourselves. I have um, in October, me and a couple of other people are putting together uh, a short. So it's a film festival for shorts that we've made collectively through the years. And, that and then we're, it's our job, you know, to promote it. And it's like we have to do the footwork, I guess, because oh, yeah. we're the little people, oh, yeah. you All know. Right. You got to wear a lot of hats. A filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know, independent filmmaker has to wear a lot of hats. Which you did in Shadows of the Illicit. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, I think that's the thing, right? With with some of the productions yeah. you you you've done, and I've seen you work that I've seen you work on, let alone uh, uh, the, the what you've said uh, other work that I haven't seen, but that you have worked on. It's, yeah, it kind of is where you have to wear multiple hats, yeah. even more so, right? Like you're saying, yeah. like, not only during the production, but even in the after production yeah. of promoting it and pushing yeah. it out there. Right. But now there's the tools for doing that, you know, right. you know. But I think it's a great experience because, you know, as you grow and your reputation becomes more solid because your credibility is legit, uh -huh. you know, people start to listen to you more yeah. now that you have something under your belt. So... When I go to do my next project or cast, uh, people are, you know, after they've seen the movie and everything, they're going to know that my word has value. And I'm not saying that for any kind of ego thing. But no, they, no, no, yeah. They, yeah. they realize, okay, he's, he's just not, you know, just, you know, talking BS. He's, you know, he's, yeah. he's looking to oh, really yeah. make another movie now. So I think it's, um, you know, there's a, a great quote, and it's a little gross, you know. It's, <laughs> it's from the movie Scarface by, you know, it's a quote by Tony Montana. He, goes, oh, he says, uh, he says, uh, he says, the only thing in this world I have are my word and my balls, and I break them for nobody. <laughs> and I think that is so true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because your, your, your word pr uh, precedes you in the sense where, like, your, your word kind of, like, confirms your actions, and your actions define who you are. Yeah. You know, so you can be the fast talker. Oh. You know, Hollywood's full of fast talkers. Oh, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. But there, there's no substance there. There's no, it's, yeah. it's, you know. Well, there's, that's what, there, yeah. There, the, yeah, there's people you who see always, that. Yeah, a lot of exactly. And there's people who always, yeah, I'm going to make this movie. I'm going to do this and do this. And they're posting pictures and do this and that. But it's all like, you know, it's all hype. Oh, yeah. You know, it's all hype. Hype is easy. Yeah, hype, hype is easy. It's easy. Yeah. But delivering something takes a lot of work. There's with a lot class, of I might add, because you did deliver with class. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had a great team to work with, you know, mm. so... Um, Take the compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You but classy it guy, was, you. Yeah, it, was, it was fun, you know. It's like, I, I don't, you know, I'm not a hype person. I'm not the type of person who likes to say, look at me, look at what I'm doing and stuff like yeah, that. You yeah. know, it's just like what, the way I speak for myself is through my work. Yeah. You know, and the people that I work with, 
you know, uh, I value them, you know, I trust them. And, and so I want everyone to feel like we were family here, you know, because yeah. I respect what they do. Yeah. You know, we respect each other. And we never had any drama on our set. Everybody was, you know, pretty tight. And, and your set was small, but you still had a crew. You still yeah. had, right? Well, the crew was just basically me and another guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, yeah. you know but so. still, but, I, mean, yeah. I mean, anytime you have more than one person, you, yeah. even with one person, you might have drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, but that's it, good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, the guy who was my crew, Nathan, he never did this before. But huh. uh, it was his first time. But yeah. he had the enthusiasm you know yeah and he had that kind of hunger and so i took a chance on him and, and boom you know yeah. it's just like he was awesome he took it really seriously he and took that was it good. really serious well, that's mm-hmm. good. he was always here before uh you know everyone else showed up for the most part and then he stayed last he he never complained he never said when are we getting done oh you know he never had that attitude he was always oh. you know he was always there and he was committed I really appreciate that. So I told him, I says, next time, next production, you're in. Don't have to worry about it. There you yeah. go. And that's the thing. And I think of of having, um, like you're saying, you, you let your body of work speak for you, right? And I think that's a part of what the social media slash just internet in general, right? right? Can and we should be utilizing that tool more to, yeah, not flashy, you know, look at the next thing we're doing right, next but right. of like pointing being able to point back and say this is what we've done right and so when we go to ask you to work on our our next film or we're asking somebody right we can point to that and say like yeah so we we were able to do this so when i tell you to move the camera three feet to the right move the camera three feet yeah. to the right you know take my take my word for it oh no. i see what you're saying right, so they right. value like they your value, input well, and, yeah yeah like joe was saying with that it oh, it's, heightens that respect yeah, it's like respect. whoa he actually finished it do you know how many things i've done that i've never seen oh yeah. you know oh, so it's yeah, like yeah. oh my gosh we're that's yeah, almost an it's epidemic done, around it's here. here of that yeah, yeah. 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 In a lot of work that just sits and the screening wasn't necessarily for me it was for everybody it was yeah, for everybody yeah. you know to show our work you know and yeah. And I enjoyed it as much as everybody else enjoyed it, you know. So, um, and it was great to see everybody having. Leah was pretty nervous. Out there, right? <laughs> I, I <laughs> so was a, So was Antonio. So was a few other people. Oh, you know? But it was it was a it was but, a fun nervous. It was like that kind yeah. of nervous, like when you're a kid. Like for me, it made me think of like when I was a kid and I used to go to Disneyland and I'd stand in line like for the Pirates of the Caribbean or the Haunted Mansion <laughs> and I'd have those butterflies in my stomach, you know, it's exciting, you know, you're standing in line and finally you get to go on, you're like, oh my God, this is great, yeah, you know, yeah. that's what the screening was like for me. It was, uh, I had those butterflies too, <laughs> but, you know, it was the excitement of the ride, so to speak, you know. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and well, that's one thing that I think that also uh, is available to us now, right, Rather uh, in the time, not just the internet, but let's expand that idea to like technology, right? Because it used to be way back in the day, you wanted to get into a festival because that was really the only way you could get your screen right. projected, your movie it's projected, exhibited. Big, right? Yeah. And now, you know, for like a, you, for a couple hundred bucks, you could buy your own projector if you wanted, or rent one, right. um, or rent an entire hall, Just rent a venue, yeah, yeah, rent a venue for a lot cheaper than what it used to be. Right. Um, and you don't have to have your video in a special format to be shown. Right. It's already, you know. Um, you know, if you rent out a movie theater, they could show your 4K file or, right. or your DVD. You know, they could do either or, format. Yeah, or like a USB, you know, <laughs> yeah. or a thumb drive it's, or something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that makes it to where being able to do that, maybe that I, I think that's a part of going forward a thing to do is to to take that power, not back, but to, you know, to empower ourselves to... Yeah. To try to be a local, I don't know if you ever you tried to enter into the Santa Barbara Film Festival. Oh no, it's hella hard to yes. get. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not impossible to get into that, or let alone the Ohio one. It's actually quite hard to get into. You get into it, it's an actual, you know, it's a hey, you made, it. not right. that you made it. Again, it's you knew the right person who got you in to put you in there. <laughs> right, you right. know, it, it's not like your movie was better than the next movie, or, or not that it doesn't deserve, but it's not like it was there on its merit. Usually. Right. right. Um, and if we, you know, we could take that back, like Leo was saying, like you have this, we had this ability to do micro, quick um, productions, let alone quick uh, uh, festivals that don't have to be a week long and go across like 16 different venues. And right. Like, no, you can do it at rent out and haul. Yeah. <laughs> 
and project it and then everyone comes in and then and then you're able to to because there is something about that that electricity of having everyone in a confined space watching your movie oh, everyone yeah. laughing at the same time yeah and, you know, uh, it was bizarre on our screen because i've never had a film that i worked on i mean not that i did a lot but this one was more my most complex one up to date oh. and just to see a, an audience just practically a full house uh -huh. reacting and just completely engaged in the movie it was very surreal for me yeah. oh, wow. you know it was nice like getting laughs at moment because we don't hear the laughs yeah. right oh, yeah, when yeah, we're doing yeah, it yeah. and it's just that was really cool and even in unexpected places yes. in the movie where uh -huh. you know in, in I wasn't writing for laughs. I, I, I try to write, what I do write for is the truth of the character. Uh -huh. And if the truth of the character, there's something humorous there and it works, fine. Right. I don't go out trying to make it, okay, I'm going to, we need to add some humor here or whatever. I right. mean, there's humor in life all the time. And, yeah. And humor in real life, no one, for the most part, is trying to be funny. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's it's a, a heightened it's a, reality yeah. kind of thing, yeah. you know, or, or just a, just the relatable. way something. Relatable. <laughs> yeah, something relatable, you know, so. <laughs> When I was sitting there, because I went all the way to the back of the theater and I w was watching there, and, and I was like, so You wow. can be the first to run. Yeah, if I just, you, have saw, to. I, you know, <laughs> seeing it on the big screen, and seeing all these heads in front of me, you know, silhouetted oh, wow. heads, it was weird. It was just bizarre, mm -hmm. you know. That's cool. So that, that's the first time that, that yeah, you've that, experienced it like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. To the, uh, cool. uh, for that scale, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean. Well, how many, how many people, I, I, I forgot how many people you said were there. Well, the place holds like about. 80 people 80 to 90 people and it was about like i would say uh, almost 90 percent filled oh, something wow. like that yeah wow, that's a big big audience to have yeah for your own for your own privately private screening private yeah. screening you know yeah. what i mean yeah, yeah. It, it, it was <laughs> a lot bigger than i th i walked in and i was like oh my god yeah. there's a lot of people like, <laughs> okay i mean literally like shaking i sit next to tom eubanks which is not always a good idea when you're nervous because he will like poke fun at you mm. and he'll be you know it's like oh yeah you're nervous and it's like yes it's yeah i was sitting on the other side of tom uh, i guess oh, his yeah. wife was you know his yes. wife and then at the end of the movie he goes like yeah and that's the thing it's like getting that respect from you know your peers and the people that you've worked with here and there or that even not worked with but you've seen them on stage as well or you just we're all in that same little community yeah. but it was really nice and they're like oh you know even after the fact i've had people write me on facebook saying like wow you did really good i'm like oh yeah thank yeah, you yeah. yeah i got a lot of compliments on the cast and the work and everything yeah and when I tell them how what the budget was, they go, "No way, <laughs> no." Yeah, this is like I, I told them I spent most of my money went for the food and, and <laughs> cat, craft services and <laughs> things like that, and you know some props and and wardrobe, but, uh, you know, just the budget was just practically non-existent for oh, the yeah. most part, you know. And I think that's the thing a lot of people overlook with a lot of the productions that 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 are done around here and, and have been completed around here. They're always done on a lot less budget, yeah, than what people think they are, because that's a, a testament to like your your production value of what you're shooting. Of like, you know, you could do this on a shoestring budget, if if not non-existent budget, right? And make something that is such a crowd pleasing, crowd understanding, yeah. um, product that you know, and a lot of people without seeing it, they kind of discourage themselves. Right. Especially around here, of like, you know, why well, can't make something like, like, because they're comparing to what they see in in in, in Hollywood movies. in a Hollywood movie, and yeah. Like, and like, you well, see all those credits go. And there's like yeah, five minutes exactly, of credits. You know? Exactly. Exactly. I, I swear, what they do is now they go in and they get their employee list of just who's at the company, and they yeah. just paste it into <laughs> there. Yeah. Like, all those people did not work on this movie. Yeah. There's no way that many people work. Yeah. You know. Well, one of my inspirations is Robert Rodriguez. He uh he wrote uh, this book that I read called Rebel Without a Crew. And it's awesome. It just he just shows you really just to cut the fat. There's like so much waste in movie production. You don't oh, yeah. need all the stuff that they do. You right. can just, you know, you can do a lot of it yourself. He he does his own uh, camera work. Yeah. You know, he, obviously he writes it. He writes his scripts and he does his editing and he does a lot of the lot of the production that you don't see, right. you know behind the scenes stuff. And he talks about how you can basically do a quality movie without, you know, a Hollywood type oh, yeah. production. And I totally believe that. You know, oh, I totally believe that. Agree. And again, like we talked about earlier about wearing many hats, I think for a filmmaker, I think it's very, very important to understand all the, you know, the lighting, 
you learn the, you know, the lens, what lens you need for this shot and all that kind of stuff yeah. and all that. Because if you start to, if you continue on your trajectory, you get to a point where you start having a team under you. Mm-hmm. So you understand what they're going for. So when you try to explain something, you want this shot at this angle or whatever, right. uh, and being that you've done that before, you can explain it to them and they can't BS you on it because you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know what it takes. You know, I mean, you can do it yourself, but now that you have a team, you entrust them with it. Right, right. Because you know, so. now you, yeah, you get the team, if anything, right, just to be more efficient with right. your time. So you can focus more on the directing. Yeah, now, exactly. You know. Yeah. Now, do you find that to be a little difficult to give up that little piece? Uh, you know, I, th- I, I think. Yes and no. Uh, yes, in a sense, because you all you just you want to be able to control the production more. But I think you have to entrust, just like you entrust the actors to say the lines and to move and do you know and come up with their own stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try not to interfere too much unless it's something something that's that they're doing that is just not satisfying me with what I'm going for, uh-huh. you know. But again, wearing the different hats, I I I would know exactly. Mm-hmm how to set up that shot if that person was not understanding what I was verbally communicating to them. Right. Because then I can take over and say, look, no offense, but this is, you know, and I can do a little more hands-on with them. And then they would understand. That's why a lot of people like Scorsese and Michael Mann and, and Spielberg, they work with a lot of the same people all the time because they understand what they're looking for. Oh, yeah. yeah. They understand what... You know, when, when Scorsese says, uh, uh, this is the kind of shot I want, like, boom, you know, their cinematographer understands what they're coming, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, we're talking about, or the light, you know, the light, you know, designer or whatever, you yeah. know, yeah. production design, you know, da- design. So they understand exactly because they have that camaraderie. It's like a family. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, so. well, and, 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 and to that degree, right? Like the crew to it is like the i mean it's a family yes but it's also like a tool of the director right right, right. and the director knows just like you know with the lens and just like you know with with what lights to use and what audio equipment to use right you know okay i need it i want to use this guy because i know this is the type of work that he puts out because everyone right. puts out a different type there's right. a style that right. they right just do. like a musician like you listen yeah. to led yeah. zeppelin you know or you listen to acdc or you listen to the bgs i mean it's what what you know, you feel, yeah. you know, what yeah, you want to that, listen to. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's, I think that's another thing that is missed around here. <laughs> Not missed, but it's overlooked in the idea that to do a production, small production in the, in this area, it is like a family, right? It's more right. of a family atmosphere than it is a big quote Hollywood production where right, everyone has their right. one hat they wear and they don't do anything they, else. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. very union right. or SAG ish. Right. Um, and because people around here, a lot of times, you know, you get, you get people that help. I'm not saying every single one does this, but the, right. the mentality sets in of like, well, either, well, I'm not doing what I, I want to be doing. Yeah. You know, like if someone wants to be an editor, but they're helping with your lighting. Right. And they're like, well, I don't want to be a lighting guy. I want to do editing. And, Sometimes that mentality sinks in, and then they forget how, like, well, yeah, it's a small environment. Yeah, you're going to do lighting today, but you might be editing this, you know, it's, later. Right. Because you're wearing the multiple hats. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and sometimes people forget that. that exactly. This, everyone's wearing multiple hats. For me, it's just like, I've, okay, I can let go of the lighting. I can let go of the sound and everything like that. But I think the hard thing for me to let go would be editing. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love editing. Because. Yeah, I can see that because that's your story. You're yeah. forming the yeah. story. Yeah. It's the what do they call that? The final edit, or the final draft of the movie. They say it's yeah. the edit. Like you, you write it once, that's one draft, and then you shoot it once, and that's it. It, right. it might be something totally different than what you wrote, and then when you go to edit it, that's the actual final draft because it might be something very different than what you wrote, and very right. different than what you shot because the edit is. The final say of like, yeah, that's that's what. Right, like in the old studio days, yeah. they used to have a complete different you know department that just took care of the editing, mm-hmm. and the directors were not even involved. Oh yeah, you know, and a lot of the, you know, like uh, Alfred Hitchcock and David O. Selznick was a big producer, and produced a lot of Hitchcock films. Um, they used to get in, like in battles, you know, and stuff like that about the script, about all these different processes and stuff like that. And uh, Hitchcock, uh, like. You know, he was he he. What he storyboarded, what he 
went in with production, everything had to be exactly the way he, he wanted it. You oh. know, so like, for example, you couldn't get like an actor like De Niro, or Pacino, or someone who who improvises and change things oh, up. You, yeah. you, they they would just clash because Hitchcock was so set in his way. It had mm. to be just exactly like his storyboard image, and the the lines you couldn't even put a mm or a or oh, any really? kind of like you know additional like just dialogue stuff <laughs> you know in, in the script so every sound every everything the had emote, to be if you will was on purpose yeah it, it, and it was according to the script yeah so you know wow he seemed not to have too much respect for actors you know he basically <laughs> you know for their creativity these, yeah, just call them like a, what props or something like that you call yeah. them like movable props human props i don't remember the exact word but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he did yeah. ha- he did love the uh uh, the women in his films, though he all his women were blondes for the most part. Yeah, oh, that is know, true. Like Grace Kelly, and yeah, which was I think was his favorite. <laughs> you know, I think he was heartbroken when she decided to leave acting and got married to the was the Prince of Monaco or oh, something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought she had a lot of potential. I just saw Rear Window not too long ago, and she was just awesome in that. Uh, yeah, no tidbit I did not know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know a little bit more about you. And um, so how long have you been a creator? Well, it, as far as movies, uh, it started when I was a little kid. Uh, when I saw the Dollar Trilogy, the Sergio Leone, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Fistful of dollars for a few dollars more. Bam! That just knocked me over. That was like a Bruce Lee kick to the head. It just knocked <laughs> me. It just knocked me out. Because uh, wow. up until that point, the westerns that I used to see were very clean. You know, mm. it, there was nothing. Didn't seem realistic. But then you saw the Sergio Leone movies, and you saw the sweat. You saw the mm-hmm. griminess. You saw the grittiness. You s- it was more realistic. It made you feel like you were there. You could almost smell the, the stink. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, this, and, and, and the body odor of, of those characters because it was just, just the way it was captured. Mm-hmm. And it just felt real. And then the music on top of that, it just it was nothing that I've seen. And I thought, my God, I felt like I was really back in that time. I really felt like I was there yeah. as the an West. observer <laughs> yeah and i thought to myself how did they do that how did they do that and then i saw again not too long afterwards uh james bond dr no okay. when i was a little kid and that was it that was like boom you know it's just like okay i then i, I have to. back then there was no internet there was nothing no. like that oh, yeah. so i'd go to the library and i'd get these books on movies and stuff like that and i'd see how they the lights and how they you know create this whole thing yeah so then after reading a few books, um, back then nobody had video cameras. Right. And we had a 8mm camera, one of those little, when you crank them up like this, and you, you, know, you put the cartridge in there. And <laughs> so I wrote a little movie script, a little western that we shot in the backyard. <laughs> oh, wow. I got the neighborhood Where kids. Where is it? I want to see this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got, let's see this. <laughs> I, I got the neighborhood kids. We got those little cap guns and holsters oh and hats God. and everything. <laughs> uh-huh. And my mom was the camera person. Oh you my know? gosh, I love this. And then, uh, you know, we'd be in the backyard. So there's like a wall. There's a pool there, you know. It's supposed to be a Western, you know. There's a pool right there, you know. And, and there's like a bicycle in the background. It's supposed to be a Western, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I and love so there's no it. sound, you know. There's no yeah. sound. Right, so, right, right. So I would actually just before we shoot, I'd tell the kid, okay, we're gonna do this, and I tell my mom too. I says, okay, you just follow me and this, and then, and then when I would call cut, I wouldn't like go, you know, because there was no editing, so oh, yeah, we just yeah. shot in sequence. So I go, yeah. I go like cut, <laughs> cut, you know, I was like like I have a gunfight, boom, the guy would fall down dead. I go, okay, mom, cut. And go, and she's still rolling. What? Cut. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's awesome. We did about like three of those movies. That's perfect. Now, what was it that you that captured captured you most? Was it writing? Was it the directing? Was it the the filmmaking as a whole? The acting? What what was it? I think it was just the whole thing of making a movie. Mm -hmm. To me, when I was a kid, I I didn't really separate writer from director. To Mm -hmm. me, it was just like you made the movie. I mean, I knew about those different parts, but. For me, it wasn't like, I didn't have the option, like one of the kids, okay, you write it, 
I'm going to direct it, you know, and that kind of stuff. So I. But just you did, did it take all. charge, and yeah. you like that was just in you because it's funny. I can relate to that because when I was younger, I would get the neighborhood kids and I would tell them what to do, what character they're going to be, and we put a show on for my mom in the living room. And it's like it's just something that's yeah, it's like that in you to create something. And you don't even think about like anything else but that you just think you know for me it was like i don't know if you ever watched the little rascals yes uh-huh. where they used to do those stage bar yes yes, productions. yes it was just like that we just yeah. get the neighborhood kids and you know we just put put it on you know and then yeah. and then after it was developed it was like okay when's it gonna be developed you know every you know every <laughs> day is like oh my god and then finally we we get it developed and then i'd invite some of the kids and we watch it you know like my parents living room we put up like a, a like a was it a bed sheet, white bed oh, sheet? Oh, yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, show it, and you could hear all the kids going, yeah! Oh, my gosh, this <laughs> is great. We had great. the popcorn there and everything. <laughs> I and love it. it. Oh, that is fun. great. That's something kids don't get to experience yeah. anymore. And it then, is tough, yeah. the waiting for something. No, yeah. it's like yeah. instant. Having to wait. Like, yeah, like, having to wait. To yeah. even know if you shot it right. Or yeah. right. if you recorded it at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> selfies. Let me tell you, we would take selfies before they were selfies and um, or any kind of pictures. And we had to wait till it was developed to oh, see how yeah, we ended up yeah, looking yeah. like. And yeah. sometimes it would be half of our face. It yeah. didn't matter. Our picture would be horrible, It'd whatever be it was. But we had to wait. Even yeah. with the instant Polaroid, you still had to wait like five or ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, had, you, had to, you had to you fan it. You you kids fan these it. days yeah. don't know what waiting means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't understand. But it was it was fun, you know, just doing it that way. That's how I thought you did it, you know. Like <laughs> then, you know, I had no idea that you had to actually, you know, shoot like for real movies. You shoot out of sequence, basically. You shoot according to, you know, what you have access to at the moment. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. You shoot exactly. everything in this one location. <laughs> you shoot everything in this other location and all that kind of stuff. You know, everything's out of sequence. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You try to maximize the time, the shooting time at each location rather than right. Yeah. yeah, doing everything in sequence because sometimes it's just time wise. Yeah, able. exactly. So then you had the passion when you were a kid. You got it from just seeing it, and, and like you're saying, just the the feeling that you an audience member gets from watching the movie. You're like that sounds like that's what kind of got drew you to it. Like, how are they able to tell stories and make me feel this certain way? You want to be able to do that. You know, right. you want to be able to to, to do that. So then from there, did you go to school? Did you go to, like, where did you go from that? Because some people, you know, they think, oh, yeah, you know, you have to get a a, a, a master's yeah. in this. Or, you know, you have to get yeah. some degree to, to... Well, what happened is, like, after, you know, when I started... Because I made a few of these movies just throughout the, my, my, like, grammar school years, you know, uh-huh. for the most part. And then you get... Then I, once I got into high school, I kind of forgot all about that. I got caught into the high school life, you know, oh, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah acting wasn't even in you know but i still had that thing where i always saw things like in a movie sense and a few friends of mine used to say you know what you always say that you say you always say that it's like something out of a movie and i never really realized that because you know i'd be in this you know we'd be somewhere you know going somewhere or hanging out somewhere and something would happen right and i'm just not being specific uh, because i just don't remember exactly this moment but um Oh, for example, one time, this is years later, one time me and a few friends were partying along the Rincon, a friend's car, and I was in the front passenger side. It was one of those Volkswagens, those, those like station wagon Volkswagen mm-hmm. things. And it was night, maybe about nine or ten, and, you know, we're partying there and just having drinks and stuff, like it, passing the bottle around. And this guy comes up out of the dark and grabs me f- from outside, and I had the bottle in my hand, and I smacked him across the face with the bottle. Because I thought this guy was trying to rob us or, you know, uh-huh. or whatever. Because we were right there where the houses start, where the Rincon, you know. Uh-huh. We're just right there with the edge where the ocean's here and then the track of houses. And so I'm struggling with this guy and we're like exchanging blows and stuff like that. He, you know, fortunately he wasn't able to hit me because he, he couldn't, you know, reach inside. Which right. I, he was leaning inside. And I was just popping him, you know, uppercuts and stuff like that. And then I finally pushed him out the window and we took off. Uh-huh. And the next thing you know, we're down by not too far from the cross, you know, but just below oh. that. And we start uh, going up there uh-huh. and we start seeing police lights going around. Several cop cars. We hear the sirens going on. And then we started saying, oh, man, we got to get out of here, you know. 
because we got we kind of started thinking maybe they're after us so we started going down and there was some apartment complexes n- near there we pulled in the we, you know we saw flashing lights behind us uh. and my <laughs> friends is driving crazy trying to get out all over this place and we get trapped inside this parking lot uh for apartment complex and then these like three or four cop cars just come flying up the 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 driveway literally like something out of some movie the doors open up and you just hear you know like all this noise and you hear the clicking of the guns and they're all oh pointing at us and the lights are hitting us and then also you hear this microphone okay you driver side open up your door slowly easy stand up and walk out with your hands up in the air and then kneel and then you go through the whole process and everything like that you know uh-huh. And me and the other three guys in the back are going, oh, shit, what the hell, you know, what do we do, you know? Yeah. We're still trying to process this. And then, okay, it was my turn, boom, you know, like this. And I just kind of look back, and I just see all these guns pointing at me. It's oh, like, my gosh. Oh, my God, I hope none of these guys are nervous. And just, yeah. You know, like they're oh, not making yeah. a move. And so I get back up and everything, you know, going on my knees, and I go like this, and, and you know, handcuffs go on and everything like that. And then the guy just grabs me, and just, you know, and he's, throw me into the back of a police car same thing with the others and we get down to the police station and everything and they start interrogating it was just like in the movies one little table thing there uh-huh. there's a, you know light and one room and i'm sitting there waiting and waiting and i can hear one of my other friends going you know he's like going, fuck what the fuck is going on you know he's like he was drunk and he's just yeah. like cursing and stuff like that and he's going i gotta take a piss but he ends up taking a piss on the floor in there and they made him clean it up <laughs> you know and he was just pounding, pounding, pounding. And uh, finally, the detective comes to my, you know, my room, comes in, he, you know, attitude and everything like that, and has like this clipboard and folder and tosses it on the table. And I'm just looking at him and he's like looking at me, trying to like mad dog me. <laughs> and I don't remember exactly what he said, but it says uh, something to the effect of like, uh, we got you. We got you guys. <laughs> and he was trying to make me uh, kind of like convict myself by s- saying, uh, now you, you hit the guy in, in the head with a bottle, didn't you? And I said, no. You know, of course I did, but I wasn't going to admit to anything. Right. Because, uh, you know, I watch all these movies, you know, like, <laughs> never, never admit to anything. You know, yeah. Get a lawyer or whatever. <laughs> And then he tried to break me down by saying all this different stuff. Oh, your fr- your friends are ratting on you. This uh, you're the one that started the fight and everything like that. And I said, no, 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 no. I says, hey, I we I was just there with my friends. We were just partying in the car, and this guy came up out of the out of the dark, and just started grabbing me, and I didn't know what was happening. He just, you know, I said I was kind of shocked and stunned, so I was defending myself. Well, I never said I hit him right there. I just said I was defending myself. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm just paraphrasing. It was many years ago. And then he goes, come on. Just, you know, you you know, you know, can be here for hours or, you know, we can make this really short. And, you know, just admit, you know. Yeah. You know, we, we're we going to take fingerprints and everything like that from from you guys. And, you know, <laughs> fingerprinted me and everything. And then I find out what the reason they came after us because that house was broken into the night before so they thought we were the ones thieves oh. coming back again to continue like to break into the place and the guy thought that we were the the guy lived there and he thought we were the ones so he was in. not a cop he was the guy who grabbed me uh-huh. you know at the Rincon lived there I guess uh, either he was a neighbor or he lived in that house that was broken into and he uh. thought we were the ones that broke into it so once our fingerprints and everything didn't match and our stories and everything and, you know, uh, just things just didn't jive with what the cops and the guy uh-huh. was saying, they finally let us go hours later. Oh, it was like maybe three or four in the morning, you know. So we get let out and everything like that. And, uh, you know, the, the cop didn't even apologize or anything. He uh-huh. was just kind of just stone faced, you know. Said, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys are free to go. But we're gonna, we're gonna be watching you, you know, just <laughs> like, being a little smart. What ass. you guys? I'm yeah. a citizen. Yeah, I'm innocent. You know, we were yeah. just partying. We didn't do anything. Yeah, maybe, we, you know, we should have been drinking in the car there, partying. You know, yeah, if anything, it, you know, they could have busted us for that. But you know, but we're not thieves. We didn't break into any yeah. place. We were just how many, how many people in their early twenties 
you know, go out and yeah. on the beach and, you know, they have a few drinks with their buddies, listen to some music and just, you know, just, yeah. just chill. You yeah. know, that's all we were doing. You know, and then finally the, the guy who attacked me and everything, he apologized, you know, after he, it was found out that we weren't the ones who broke in yeah. you know, after they did all the, you know, I guess forensics stuff, the fingerprints and everything. <laughs> um, so he says, man, you know, sorry about it, you know, just, you know, and he explained it. And I said, yeah, no problem, man, no problem. Uh-huh. But, you know, he says, just be careful next time. <laughs> yeah. Don't just start attacking people. Oh, Don't yeah. start, you know, yeah. or, you know, you got to make sure who you, who you're dealing with first, you know, and then going back to the movie thing, I, we walked out, the, you know, it was for the government center area. Uh-huh. Uh, is where they had us and they, there's a, I guess the county jail or whatever yeah, it's like, they yeah. had some kind of holding tank and they, had, they, got, they got a police office there you know whatever <laughs> and we're walking back and you know there's a Carlos Jr. on um, on Victoria uh-huh. so uh, the car was impounded or something we couldn't drive you know, <laughs> so we had we walked out we walked along there, and then I'm going, and then I'm talking to my friend, the guy who owns the car, the driver. He says, "Man, that was just like a movie, man. That was like something, <laughs> a movie." Like, and I says, "You know, one day I gotta write this. I gotta, I gotta oh make. God, it. If do. I ever become you a, get in the movies, I'm gonna, I'm mm. gonna make this into a scene. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna write this in somehow." Did you? No, not yet. Not oh yet. my God! No, and he says, he says, and he goes, "Dude, you're always talking about things like they're in the movies, you know." <laughs> this is like, and, Imagine. you know, I relate with things like that a lot of times, yeah. you know, because movies, for the most part, when they're about someone's life or something <laughs> specifically, you know, human story, they're usually moments, extraordinary moments in their lives. It's not like mm-hmm. they're regular lives because regular lives are boring. Yeah. You know, it's usually like something happens in their life. Oh, yeah. Know, it's yeah. just out of the ordinary. That's why you never see anyone go to the bathroom in movies. Yeah. Well, or if they do, if they it's do, for it's, a reason. It's you an know? extreme reason. Yeah, it's an extreme reason, you know. <laughs> but... uh yeah, just so many years, many times, you know, I remember I was working at this, uh, it was one of my first jobs out of high school. Was, uh, I was working in Oxnard in an electrical distributing company, and I was like a work in the warehouse, I delivered, you know. Huh. And I said the same thing to the to my supervisor. I was talking about something that had happened to me. Go, man, it was like a, a movie, you know. I was like this, and he goes, you, you know, you, you say that all the time. And I never really realized that, you know. Yeah. And then I started, you know, thinking, well, maybe I should get back into it. Maybe, you know, like I, I kind of lost that enthusiasm I had when I was a kid about making those backyard movies. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. thought, okay, well, I'd like to get back into it, but I'm in my, my 20s now. How do I go about doing that? How do you get in? How do you get involved? I did nothing. I knew nothing about that. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, maybe just get into acting and you know, do some stage plays. So I went to Ventura College and took some classes there, some acting classes, got into some plays there and then I met some people there and that's pretty much how it launched me. And then, uh, I did some acting, some commercials and some parts and TVs and movies and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Nothing significant, you know? Yeah. Um, but I learned a lot in that process. I learned a lot about production and I studied it on my own too. And then well, I moved to LA, I was living in LA, uh, um, right by uh, Sony studios and I was bartending uh-huh. in Westwood village. And then I went to LACC, Los Angeles City College. I signed mm-hmm. up for a film course there. Um, but I ended up dropping out after like two months because just paying for film stock and all oh, that yeah. gets expensive and I, yeah. couldn't, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't afford it. So I, I made one little film there. It was about like 11 minutes. It's just no, no dialogue. It was on 8 millimeter, mm-hmm. And it was just uh, it was one of the assignments we had to do. And uh, that was in 1995. <laughs> And then I didn't do anything for a while until just literally a few years ago. I kind of started okay. back up again. Then uh, I, I went to South America, lived there for a little while, came back, and then I signed up for this, like, um, it wasn't a production class. It was something like studio production, but they just show you the nuts and bolts of, like, how to use the editing process, and st- you know, the, the yeah. software. Yeah, we're around here? Yeah, or it was VASE. Yeah, Ventura... Adult continuing education. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, I started just learning just some of the stuff about editing things there, but yeah. I never really formally took a film, you know, film course. Yeah. So you just had like exposure here, exposure there. Yeah, the- most of my learning came f- just from being on sets and watching yeah. how the directors and the production crew work, and and sometimes when the the camera was like there was nobody around the camera, I'd like take a peek. And 
and so I you know, <laughs> see, we'll see what the shot was going to be. You know, and oh. one time uh, assistant director got mad and yelled at me. He says, "Get away from that camera! You're not supposed to be there." You know, and I said, you I'm jumped on saying. it, and started spinning the wheels. Yeah, <laughs> I you know, got so, it. Okay. But I, I, I started talking to the director, you know, the cinematographer, and he was a really nice guy. And oh, that's good. You know, I asked him all these different questions between the shots and stuff like that. I wasn't intruding on him. It was just mm-hmm. like during breaks when yeah, when they're when you know, they're resetting the set exactly, or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, and yeah. then, you know, I guess it gets, gets back questions. to that Rodriguez way of like, there's, there's too many people on yeah, set. If you yeah, have people that are many. just standing, waiting for other people, you have too many people right. on Right. And it's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's a waste of money. Yes. So I just, you know, and then as far as editing, you know, I learned a lot of it just by, I love movies. So I oh, watch yeah. movies all the yeah. time. I, and I, editing for me, it's instinctual. It's not like, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, you sense it. Yeah. You know, you feel okay when it's how how long you should hold on the shot, mm-hmm. when to cut to another shot, a reactionary shot. What what comes after that? You know, it's like right. You you sense it. It's not like you can't. It's not something you you can teach. It's you can't. Yeah. It's something primal. It's something visceral that you sense. I agree. That you just trust yourself with. You know. I mean, there are times where you feel okay. The sh- it goes too long and you cut it down, or it's too short. And you need to extend the shot. You mm-hmm. know the you know. And then uh, also, too, with angles, mm-hmm. camera angles, you know, what lens to use. You want to use something that's, that's tight on a person or you want something more wide. You know, it's like well, all that stuff. You, you really can't teach that stuff. You can teach the technical aspect of yeah. filmmaking, yeah. but you can't teach you, the aesthetics, the, right. you know, the pacing. Cause I, it's like a lot of movies today, um, there's a lot of CGI, you know, oh, yeah. and I'm not into the CGI stuff. Every you know, like I'm not into the superhero. I got nothing against those superhero movies. I mean, mm. you know, God bless the people who love those movies and make them. But I like more of the old movies, you know, like yeah. from the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, 60s and stuff. You know, like you know, like the standard Casablanca. Yeah, like yeah. Doctor Zhivago. My the directors who influenced me are like William Wyler, Billy Wilder, or Wilder, um, King Vidor, and then you got Howard Hawks, and you got Alfred Hitchcock, you got Michael Curtiz. These phenomenal directors. D. W. Griffiths used to be DeMille. You know these oh, yeah. directors are just phenomenal who were just pioneers of the era. And not one amount of CGI in any of that. Yeah, you don't see. <laughs> they're all human stories. They're beautiful yeah. stories. Yeah. You know and. It was a different type of filmmaking back then. Yeah. It was the story, the human story, the human struggle, right. the human passion, the human angst, the survival. It, you know, in the stories, they didn't have like these big special effects and oh, yeah. that you know, crash, boom, bang. You know, all this surround sound stuff. Mm-hmm. The stories were very simple, easy to follow, and you got drawn into them. And that's that is talent to, to draw people mm-hmm. into a story without having to rely on all the special effects. Yes, and can I uh, interject here? Oh, is sure. that uh, feedback from Shadows of the Illicit, uh, one person had told me that it was amazing, the story as a whole, it was amazing that um, almost like the camera didn't have to do so much. Yeah. I mean, you know, they said like it was um, the acting, the connecting, the connection there, the angles, It was. it was just exactly what you're saying what you're describing Mm -hmm. you created that and people um that's what they took away from it Mm. so i just wanted to share that with you you. yeah Mm -hmm. and i think you know it's like um as far as as far as the more modern directors i you know i like like david lean i like martin scorsese michael mann spielberg you know um david fincher it was at wes anderson and paul anderson uh, Quentin Tarantino, you know, Robert Rodriguez. I mean, there's a lot of others that I'm leaving out, but there's, uh, you know. But they're all, they all have that common thread of, like you're saying, like it's more about the human condition right. in their story rather than the effect. Because even with like like um, Tarantino, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, it's just a lot of violent films. And it's like, well, no, like within that, within that, right? It It's, it the story isn't reliant on the violence. Like right. there's still that human element within it. Right. Right. And, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it... And, and I, and those w- movies inspire me in the sense of like, uh, to want to continue that, that path of those kind of stories. Yeah. I mean, for example, like, okay, the superhero movies that I like are the three Batmans by, um, 
Oh, you know, the Dark Knight series. Oh, yeah, with uh, uh, Nolan? Christopher yeah, Christopher Nolan. Nolan. Yeah. yeah, those yeah. were good. Those were yeah. really done very, very well. Yeah. Uh, even though they relied on CGI and stuff like that, but that's kind of like the exception to the rule and right. stuff like well, that. Well, because... It had to because of the character that you right, have. The character, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of the stuff you just cannot make. It's not right. practical to make it practical. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I got nothing against the big superhero movies with all the you know flash <laughs> and bang and boom and you know the CGI. It's just yeah. it's it, it's just it's a different branch, you know, from what I prefer to see. You right. know? But like. Um, my base, for example, is more rooted in like the like this book, for example, The Genius of the System. It's about the studio days of, of Hollywood when Hollywood was just churning out. There were movie factories. They were just uh -huh. churning, churning anything out. You had the great uh, producers like Irving Thalberg. You had David L. Selznick. Uh -huh. You had Daryl F. Zanuck. You had, you know, these these great producers who who knew th what storytelling was all about. And you read about how they, they, you know, controlled everything. They were kind of controlling at times, mm -hmm. but, uh, and they were obsessive, but you have to be that way. You know, oh, yeah. you, if you believe in something, you have to stick to your guns. And these guys did that. You know, yeah. they, they clashed with a lot of the talent and stuff like that too. And sometimes they weren't right. Sometimes the talent was right. Right. Sometimes the producer was right. But back then, it, the system was more geared to telling good stories, you know, taking the average person and throwing them into a bizarre situation, so to speak. Right. Whether, you know, it's a war, whether it's gangsters or whether it's somebody... Birds. Yeah, like birds <laughs> or whatever, yeah, you know. These, yeah. You know, the, the whole system back then was more in, like what is now the independence. Mm -hmm. Now it's all... Conglomerates. The studios oh, are yeah. big conglomerates. It's, They're yeah. massive. They it's got all stockholders, and you know, it's, 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 it's all movies made by checklists now, yeah. right? Like the the, yeah. the conglomerates go through. They're like, okay, these ten items are testing well with the audience, so make sure these ten items right. are in your movie, no matter what the movie money, is. Money, 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 right. money, yeah. money, money. Yeah, look how many remakes there. There's so many oh, remakes. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> yes. come on, did, did Hollywood lose? You know, the creativity. Oh, you gosh. know, for storytelling. Yeah. There's so many great stories out there that, that, that need to be told. Yeah. Simple. You know? yeah. Simple. Yeah. And they beautiful. would cost millions less than yeah. to do these big, you know, tentpole productions. Yeah. Mind boggling. Yeah, it is mind boggling. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's scary because uh, I think it was Spielberg that was saying that, like, it, it, like, he was saying that a few years ago, not almost 10 years ago, uh, but he was talking about how as the industry goes forward and they start making these more tentpole movies, these bigger and bigger movies. Yeah. All it takes is one summer of like four movies not making it, and it could take out an entire studio because oh, yeah. they cost too much. Yes. And they can, and that's kind of what is happening. Like they're kind of still going, right? But it's almost on like borrowed money. It's not money that they're making, you know? Because like, well, they're on franchises. Yeah, they're on franchises. Right. That's why yes. they have the franchise right. because mm -hmm. that's the only way they can keep it afloat. That's the only way just, Star Wars stays afloat. Cause it's, right. It's, it's making a hell of a lot of money, but it's just barely making back what it costs to. To keep it going, right? Oh, I reminds me of ET. I love ET. <laughs> That's just yeah. sad too. They can't I, make movies like that I anymore. Love, it was yeah. so yeah. just sweet and it's I don't know. very genuine. Yes. Yeah, very, very, very. I mean, you think yeah. of the the concept, yeah. you know, of coming up with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, how was that pitched? You know, I always think, <laughs> how was that pitched? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, you know, they tried. They um, not tried. They have to me succeeded with Stranger Things to catch oh. that essence mm. of. Yeah. E.T. Yeah. I mean, that is just, oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. awesome. But again, that's almost like on the, not necessarily an independent level, but it is almost like it's not in the actual studio, and that's how it was able to be made. That it's way Netflix, they right? let the directors right. do more right. of what they wanted right. to do rather right. than, if that went through the more traditional route now of, of what Hollywood's doing, it, it would have been Yeah, it, it does something different. Yeah. yeah, it's like I love um, browsing through um, like Netflix or Amazon and looking, and you see these little small productions. I, I oh, love yeah. that. It's oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I could appreciate it, I guess, because yeah. I understand like, what it takes to make right. yeah. you know, these films, and I love I love it. Well, that's what I, I love about um, uh, YouTube. And going through and finding those little ones that are in there that oh, are like, yeah, yeah. they can't even get to Netflix yet, <laughs> you know, and they're yes. just barely on there. But they're when you're watching them, you're like, holy crap, 
where did they get the budget or how were they yeah. able to do that? Or, yeah. and then you start to either see behind the scenes or you, you get to study it a little more because it's on a medium where you could pause it and look at it and go, yeah. well, how did they, Oh, all they did was this, you know, right. But it se- sold the point, you right. know? And, um, there's so much talent out there. Oh, there's oh, yeah. so there is. much yeah. talent. It's like, I've been the last couple of nights I've, I've watched a movie night crawler and then uh, nocturnal, animals both with uh, jake uh, uh Jill Jill Hall. Hall. Yeah. Love. I, th- I think he's really coming up on oh, yeah. own. he's both those movies i mean i've seen other movies of his but th- those are my two yes. favorite of his yeah he's re- i remember seeing him the first time he w- did a movie with uh, dennis quaid it was dennis quaid or Raz? yeah dennis quaid where it was like some the day after thing. Oh, the day after tomorrow. Something like that, where yeah. the, everything gets like a, uh, an environmental disaster. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And you know, when when I saw that, okay, you know, all right. But he's really come a long way as oh, far yeah. as talent. Yeah. As far as just really, he you could see he's really committed. He really throws everything yeah. into it. And oh yeah. If I ever have a chance, I would love to work with him. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that. So when you get him to be in your <laughs> film, um, hello, <laughs> I need and kissing scenes will be a <laughs> okay for that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what Jake, anybody says. Jake, if you're listening, <laughs> yes, please, hello, yeah. call oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. We'll have his contact information below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I think he's. I, I think he's underrated, and I think he's yes. overlooked a lot. Oh, yeah. I think he is. He's a very dynamic, powerful actor. He's just. Yes. I don't think it's anything he can't do. No. Oh, yeah. You know, he played, you know, I saw it was that he played a boxer in this one movie. I forgot the name of it. Uh, oh, uh, Southpaw. No, was it? Southpaw. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah, he South was Paul. amazing. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Well, let's go way back. Like Donnie Darko. I yeah. like yeah. that one. And <laughs> then he did a, a end of a police one. End of. Uh, end of Watch. End of Watch. Yeah. Yes. He was awesome Absolutely. in that oh, one, too. I think and that's why I think in the movie that uh, uh, the day after tomorrow, because you're right, it really wasn't like, that when you see him there, you're like, well, yeah, it doesn't, uh, well, he did. I think what it was is it really wasn't a very well thought through character. It, it was almost like because he was the son, right? And he right, was kind of right, off to the right, side right. of this. So he didn't have much to play he didn't with. Have, you yeah, know? much to play with. As He's a chameleon, to, though. He could do he is, anything. He oh, yeah. Do anything. But when yeah. you have a script that is lacking of anything to chameleon into, yeah. you know, like it doesn't really because everything, every character on that that the day after tomorrow was very. Not cliche, but they were very like almost one dimensional. Right, they really couldn't right. add any depth to the characters because right. there were so many characters to, to go yeah. back and forth. Of on. course, you know I'm sure he was limited to yeah. You know he was just the son of the main character. Oh yeah. You know, so yeah, exactly. And, yeah. So and, oh, only uh, the only reason why I think that is because yeah, he had done already Johnny uh, Darko. He had Johnny already Darko. done. Yeah, Bubble boy. <laughs> Bubble boy. <laughs> he had already done yeah. stuff Bubble where boy. like it showed he can. He's quirky. He can yeah, do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah. can do so much better. And, and when he was in that one, it's like, yeah, you okay. Sometimes yeah. you might miss. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the, you, yeah. But it's not him. It was the mm-hmm. script failed him. Yeah, yeah the, so the movie capable. Nightcrawler and Nocturnal Animals, he was, there was a darker yes. side Yes, of him. Nightcrawler. And, is. and I just, I loved the production values too because they were both kind of noirish mm-hmm. in the sense dark. where they were just dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and yeah. there was you know a sense, a sense of danger. Yeah, you know, without foreboding, without being a violent movie. You know, yes. but yeah. but uh, and the the soundtrack too was amazing. Oh yeah, it was very kind of haunting, and it didn't overpower, but it kind of complemented mm-hmm. the scenes and and the movie. And it's been like you know something kind of like inspired you know give me some ideas and things like that for a production that i'd like to do down the line so i hope i get to work with you jake you yes <laughs> yes and i kind of like that he's not so exposed like overexposed yeah, 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 i yeah, love yeah, so yeah, yeah, like yeah. Keep, keep it that way i like when actors do that i don't yeah. want to yeah. know and i see they're just their, their true you know, yeah he's, he, yeah he, he, he want to forget who they are he, he, he seems to approach it with a blue collar kind of attitude yes. where mm-hmm. you know it's about the work yeah, you know. At I the seen, end of the day, it is. It's, yeah, it's and I a seen, job. I seen interviews with him, and he seems humble, modest, low yeah. key. Does, he doesn't seem like he's into himself, and yeah. you know. So. Oh, oh, we're yeah. giving him props. Hashtag Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Hashtag, yeah. hashtag Jake work with us. And he call, has. Call he, me. He's got a great <laughs> look for the camera. He's really. Oh, yeah. I can see him. I can see him in like you know. I started thinking about uh, shadows of the illicit. I could see him as kind of. 
like the Milo character. Uh -huh. I could totally see him, yeah. you know, in a yeah. fedora and a yes, you know, breasted <laughs> suit gang. I could see him as a gangster. Oh yeah! Wow, you now I'm imagining oh, yeah. that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> It's yeah. calm right now. Yeah. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of like the, the classic actors from back in the 30s and 40s, mm. you know, where where they would just like, um, there's a one of my favorite actors, I just blanked on his name, is John Garfield. Okay. John Garfield is just an awesome actor, very much like that. Uh, same kind of just I intensity. Unfortunately, you know, he died, he didn't get to live out his full life, you know, but... Yeah. You know, he's the one who did the original, the post, the postman always rings twice. Oh, okay. The original one, and he's done a few other ones. Uh, just a phenomenal actor, and Jake kind of has that kind of thing about him too, where they're just, they're like, they're, they're, they're just, you know, hardworking actors who just focus on the work and and yeah. commit to it. You know, and John Garfield, just a phenomenal actor too, and stuff like that. And there's a, which makes me. Leads me to another movie uh, called The Bad and the Beautiful, but directed by Vicente Minnelli, oh. which is uh, with Kirk Douglas and Lana Turner. If you ever get a chance to see that, it's an awesome movie. It's about the movie industry uh -huh. and back then at that time. It's a phenomenal movie. It's a great movie. I think you guys would I'll love check that, that movie. Out. Yeah, Bad yeah, and the Beautiful. The Bad and the Beautiful. Everybody check that out. I want to yeah. see Netflix. Comments. The Crash, because everyone's trying to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I want to see everyone's comments down below, um, oh. <laughs> their review on the movie. <laughs> and as far as actresses, um, my favorite actress of all time is Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. I would have, you, you know, I mean, not only did I have like, you know, a big crush on her, when, but uh, she just has this charisma about her. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Sabrina. Yes. Oh, yeah. It came out in 1954 with Humphrey Bogart and William Holden. It was directed by William Wilder. And it was just a, like a Cinderella story. And actually, I, I'm a Humphrey Bogart fan, so I rented it back when there was, you know, video rentals. Oh. <laughs> and I rented it for Humphrey Bogart. I didn't think much of Audrey Hepburn at the time. I heard the name, but I didn't really associate much. This is so many years ago. And when I saw that movie, I just fell in love with Audrey Hepburn. I go, oh my God, why haven't I seen this woman <laughs> before with this actress? And she just has this grace, this presence about her, and this charm. And then I started following all her movies. And to the point where, like, now it's just like, I wish she was here mm -hmm. in our time, in our present time right now, at the age that she was back then, because I yeah. would love to just work with her. Yeah, she's one of those legends oh yeah most definitely yeah. was audrey hepburn the one who wore pants first no that was cat katherine hepburn that's katherine hepburn yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were she's much older huh? they weren't related were they no 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 okay. no, no no this hepburn was a, a name everyone <laughs> had back yeah, then. yeah. Uh, <laughs> or am i saying the name wrong am i totally wrong oh, it is hepburn mm -hmm. it is hepburn right? right they're both hepburn yes, yes. Hepburn. this one is different than the other one was Catherine. <laughs> yeah Huh. Yeah, she is so, Audrey is so cute. So I made my daughter watch uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, yeah. I've made uh, her watch that. Yeah. I've made her watch Marilyn Monroe movies too. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I just feel like youth should be exposed to these classics. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just but like for me, for, you know, there's a, there's a lot of filmmakers I talk to or other people I talk to. And when I start talking about, like we talked about, older producers from other times and directors mm -hmm. they're kind of clueless they don't oh yeah i feel like know. that's almost something that 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 the, the theater should be doing right is, or, or the studios rather than remaking everything just re-release it yeah you can re-release it don't. Uh, or if you need to like re-edit it a little bit and then re-release it yeah. you know either more like a director's cut thing yeah, like a whatever. director's cut yeah. and then just put it back out again um yeah. and then it would be different but they would get that exposure to yeah. these people that there's, you know, because even Netflix, let's say, right? And you have all these movies that, yeah, they have, they put an emphasis on current stuff and the more, right. the the stuff that's just being churned out over and over again now right. rather than like, here, watch this movie from 1923. Or, yeah, you know, that's you know, true. They don't have like a classic section. They don't have it like, it, oh. they're there. You just have oh. to know the title to go look for it. There's right. not an actual section like it almost should be by year 
mm-hmm. you know, or by that would decade. be fun if yeah. they highlighted certain ones, like just for yeah. historic reasons and yeah. Yeah, education. Like up to the like 1929 when the first talkies came out, right? With Warner Brothers was the ones behind it with with uh, Daryl Zanuck, and at that time they didn't think talkies would would take off. They yeah. said, oh, it's just a, you know, it's just a you know like a fad or just a uh, yeah. a gag kind of thing, right? But you know the Al Jolson thing when he starts singing uh, the jazz singer, yeah, and people were blown away because before with the silent movies they had an orchestra in the pit there and they would yeah. you know do all the dun 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun you know yeah the, yeah you know sound you know that was the only sound you heard but when the talkie started coming out all the the studios when they realized it was a hit they started changing their whole production to start including. Um, sound equipment right. and recordings and all the theaters at that time which actually a lot of the studios owned the theaters because they would uh-huh. show their their own movies in their own theaters first runs oh, so yeah. otherwise yeah. had second runs they had to change everything and start including audio you know the speakers and everything for those, for those change movies. everything yeah. yeah change it all and, yeah and, and so it's hard i guess for a lot of people now i, I say kids like 30 and below <laughs> of like there's not a lot of firsts anymore yeah. Right, everything's like, been done. Everything's Every been story's <laughs> been told. You know, it's just, just yeah. different perspectives. You yeah. know, it just. And, but isn't that that the thing is, I think every story has always been told and has always been retold. Right, like right, right. There right. are only so many stories you can tell. In in certain ways, but you're right with your own spin on it. Yeah, your, your own, own interpretation. It, yeah, an interpretation, and that that's the whole point of really storytelling. Right, is right. to share. Again, that human condition, the human response to a, con- a a stimulus or something that's happening outside of your your you know the normal realm of, of stuff because storytelling in its raw form right is is fantasy. It's fake. It's supposed to be right. It's supposed to be an allegory or it's supposed to be. It could be a lesson, extreme. or well, yeah. I think it's life on steroids. Parable, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be a parable, right? You know, because yeah. if you, because that it, it, it uh, uh, I've always not liked when people say like, you know, oh well, that character is a stereotypical character of like a jock or something. Yeah. It's like, well, you use that as a as a storyteller. Um, you use shorthand for stereotypes, and you use. And I don't mean like bad stereotypes, but like, you know, this is the jock. This is the emo kid. This is the, uh, uh, and you, you know, the, the villain. cool kid. And cool kid, the, yeah, right? Whatever, yeah. And you do that because you have to simplify or condense something that might take over, let's say, a year or even a day. No one's going to watch 24 hours of something happening. Right, you have to right. tell it within an hour and a half, two hours. Right. And so, yeah, you have to do all these things to condense and get the emotion to it immediately. Right. It's like sometimes people say like, well, how come in every movie, when a guy looks at a girl, all of a sudden they have to kiss now? You yeah. know, just because they looked at each other, or they throw a sex scene. No, they throw a sex scene. You're like, like, well, yeah. It in reality it doesn't happen, but it's supposed to be heightened and quickly moving right. along, because you don't want to sit there and watch the whole, you know, uh, courting and the whole. You right. want by showing that you move the story on, you know that they're connected. Right. Now, you know, right. and you move it along faster and quicker, and and. Um, being it, that's a part of storytelling, you know. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, you have to show like the heightened reality parts, yeah. you know, because it's like the small talk. Sometimes it's just boring. It's going to work. If there's small talk in a scene, it has to reveal information. Yeah. Something yeah. there, that's foreshadowing or that is kind of revealing of one of the characters. Right. You know, whether it's an intentional reveal of the character or it slips out or whatever. Because, yeah. you know, when we have conversations, a lot of times we say things we didn't really mean to oh, say. Yeah. Yeah. And the other person starts to feed off on what you're talking about and discover who you are. So obviously, in the cinematic sense, or even in a theater play, all the information that is being verbally exchanged is there to allow the audience to understand these two people yeah so a lot of it's not wasted even it's a small talk in the scene but it's not wasted small talk in the sense of like where people just start getting bored they just it's revealing information that's pertinent to the story you know whether something's going to happen down line or whether something happened already before that right you know so because even if it is shaping the character right it's shaping the character for the element of the story right right right, like it lets you know yeah you have this random 
conversation about you know someone is for some reason the character tra- reveals that they're afraid of dogs. Yeah. And then the next scene, they're at a dog park or something. Yeah. And or they could be like jogging down the street, and all of a sudden there's like a, a loose dog out in front. And yeah. Like, is, and, is, 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 and he is has he to gonna, rescue the dog, or or, or, yeah. or is he's he has to go there? Is he going to go straight ahead, or is he going to go out in the street? Yeah. Or but, is he going to go out to, all the way across the street to the other sidewalk and right, pass? Right. And what happens if he starts running that way, and the dog starts to face him? Right. You know that starts to begin to build tension. Mm-hmm. You know. And that little dialogue though that you had that almost felt like a throwaway dialogue before that scene. Now actually help build that world of, right. of the story and set the ground right. for it. Right. Now and it that, might only be like three sentences. Three seconds. That, yeah. Yeah. Three seconds. But it was enough to it establish right. that built the world where you because you put the audience in the perspective of that runner of that person yeah. who revealed that they had the fear of dogs. Or whatever. It's like okay, how yeah. are they going to react to it now? Right. Rather than just showing the jogger from yeah. the beginning and not ever knowing that right. that context. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, Sometimes I've, I've found, find a lot of times uh, uh, other short filmmakers, um, I say short filmmakers in general, they they forget that, that the audience doesn't, <laughs> they didn't get to sit there in the pitch meeting with you or as mm, you were yeah. like thinking of the idea. They didn't read the whole script and the part that you left out. They didn't read that. So they don't know what you knew as you were directing it, what the whole crew and cast knew. Right. But you cut it out, or you didn't even put it in, and then, it, it, but you always verbally smoothed that over. Yeah. And whereas, yeah, when you, when you do the, um, you have to be careful of that when you're actually doing a production. Right. right. So are you now that you have the one movie done, you're looking for funding for that movie, um, Shadows of the Illicit. Um, is there anything else that you're already like? Wait, 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 looking funding for Shadows of the Illicit? Well, not funding, but you said you wanted. Is it? Isn't it that you wanted to make it more of an, a feature length, or you wanted to do, or is it like that one's done? You're moving that on to the next thing. That one's pretty much done. Okay. Uh, I mean, if if I'm if it gets exposed out there, if it gets exposed out there, and like say a production company or a studio says, "Hey, we like your idea. We'd like to expand oh, okay. on it," then you, yeah, of course. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they but said, as far as your concern right yeah, now right it, now it's it's, it's done yeah, and i just want to put it out there okay. yeah I want to put it out there um and then i want to move on to the next one i don't know what my next one's going to be right now um okay. it might be one that i was working on before the one bag of influence oh yeah okay. which ah, i might rework yeah on that, that one, one i like that one i hope that um i might expand it because it's at it's at 61 pages oh, so wow. so it's about an hour you know screen uh, running time uh, i might ex- Extend it out to about ninety minutes, so need so to get uh, yeah. thirty more, you know, pages to at least get it like, because full length, uh, full feature is I think after fifty minutes, something like that, and then yeah, something like that, something like that, yeah. yeah. I but I, I got, um, you know, uh, I got a lot of movie ideas in my head. You know? It's <laughs> like I really, you know, it's just like with this one, Shadows of the Illicit, you know, it's just like, it all started basically by, um, when the bag of influence fell apart. Uh, you know, there was some time that went by, and then I wanted to. I didn't want to just do nothing. I wanted oh, yeah. to work on something. Oh yeah. So I started. These ideas started flashing up in my head, but I wanted less moving parts. I wanted just like literally one location mm-hmm. and just small amount of actors, so exactly. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, uh, securing this location, securing that location. You know, all right. these different things. So. Uh, and just, even down to the equipment, right? Like yeah. You didn't want to go to. I just want to keep it everything simple. Everything very, yeah, very you simple. You know, very simple. Yeah. And um, so I just started thinking, okay, just kind of in that confinement, what kind of story can I come up with? Mm-hmm. And then I just, I don't even know how the idea popped in. It just did <laughs> at some point, you know. I just started seeing images uh-huh. and, you know, and it just started to kind of develop on its own. And the characters started to come alive and, and speak with each other you uh, know and, uh, and then so then I, that's that's kind of like your 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 creative process is is rather than you know because some people get like a dog with a bone and they get a, a script <laughs> and they just uh, or a script idea and they want to they chase it all the way whether they have ideas for it or not they kind of force it to yeah you being, can't force it i, I right I, and i, it, I it, believe it, in just letting it be organic and yeah in its growth you know um because yeah. if you force it then it looks forced yeah it looks contrived um, I got to the point where I, I couldn't keep it in my head anymore. Oh. I had to start writing it. Yeah. 
They and once I start writing it, yeah, because it was a first draft also. Uh -huh. So it, it just started. Once I started writing it, and it just really started to take off. It was like you get on the freeway and you go through all the gears, <laughs> and boom, it's an overdrive now. Yeah, and it was just, it was just. I felt like I was like a, a court reporter, just you know, <laughs> I'm seeing what's happening, and I'm, I'm having to like. <laughs> to write it down as it was happening, you yeah. know, and I saw it all happening, and and originally Leah, you know, with the woman wasn't, you know, I didn't have anybody in mind, but then I started seeing Leah as the Ruby character. Okay, you know, after she, you know, I already, you know, she was already coming alive in the story, and then I contacted Leah. I wrote like a just a little outline thing, and I let her read it and thing, and uh -huh. it was still wasn't even developed. It was just in its raw state, uh -huh. you know. So once, you know, once Leah came on board, then I had a clearer picture of who the character was, you know, and it helps, you know. And with yeah. Antonio, uh, he, I didn't even really know Antonio. I met him one time before. Oh. You know, but he, his look was pretty much the look that I had in my mind as, that, as the type that I, uh -huh. that I want, you know, a tall, thin person, you know, um, his build and everything. So when he came into audition... You know, I I saw him. I you know, and he he really hit it out of the park. He you know, it's like right after we're like, yep, yeah, that's yep, it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we only had two people audition him and another guy. <laughs> but you know, I, I even thought that okay, if someone else comes in after this, they're gonna have to blow. Yep. They're gonna have to away, do something you know? way way over the top. Yeah, to yeah. So, oh. so my you know, I have like I said, I got these stories popping in my head, and you know, once I lock into it. Once I lock into a story, then it really just starts to, it really starts to take a life on its own. It, you know, I don't force it. I don't try to do anything right away. 